This is going to be part three of the tutorial for uh, completing a PowerPoint project number uh, module one, the first PowerPoint project. We are on the third uh, tutorial. Uh, on the second one, I believe we stopped at step number um, 12, and now we're up to step number 13. Um, and it asks us to go to slide number seven, which I already did, slide number seven. It used to be slide number six, but when we deleted slide number six, it um, it got pushed. Actually, it was slide number eight, and now it's slide number seven, because everything became uh, num one number lower. In any case, it's where we tutor. This is why, to make sure you're on the right one, they tell us the name that should be there. And they want us to create a smart art graphic. Again, something that should uh, ring a bell from Word. We've used smart art before. Um, and it has two steps. Uh, convert the bulleted list to a smart art graphic using the list layout called vertical bullet list shown in figure two. So it needs to look like this. Let's start with that. So how do we convert a bulleted list to a smart art graphic? Right now we got simply a bulleted list. What I will do is simply highlight. Now, uh, as a, you might remember me from class saying, some people like to highlight from start to finish. I personally like to highlight from end to beginning, doesn't matter, as long as everything is highlighted. And when I got that um, highlighted in the home tab, there's a an icon that says convert to smart art. And I will convert it to smart art. There's so many um, styles. So when I roll over the first one, it says vertical bulleted list. And I think I'm lucky that this is the first one they actually want. They call it a vertical bulleted list. That's exactly the one I need. So it happens to be the first one. Converts to smart art, vertical bulleted list, click. And here's what it does. It actually converts it to a much more artistic, uh, graphically uh, uh, impressive method, but it's the same text. It also opens a little panel to the left, which can be open and closed like this. By the way, you could do without that panel because you can type directly here. What do they want me to do with this smart art? Um, I just converted it. So done. And B is to change the text library writing center to library writing lab. So it's really replacing the word center with the word lab on the second shape. Just by clicking on it, and instead of center, lab. Uh, I think they want a capital L. Yes, they do. OK. Save. And that was step number 13. Back to Word. So I did A and B. I converted it to a smart um, art graphic and I changed the word center to lab. Now we're in step number 14. On slide number eight, so let's move to that, which is called major specific tutoring. Um, edit the slide as follows. Delete the content placeholder on the right. So this one started as two content and they want me to simply delete that one. All I got to do is click. Sometimes it's best to like click on its handle to make sure it's selected. It's got that selected look and just hit the delete button on your keyboard and it deletes it. That's it. Save. Um, if you're using a Mac, then the delete button also doubles as the backspace button. On Windows, it's two different keys. Just use the Dell or delete button um, on the keyboard. The next instruction, so this one's done, is in the content placeholder, the one that's left on the left, enter the following multi-level bulleted list. So again, uh, be, catering to my laziness, I'm saying, well, I think I want to start by just copying the whole thing. 
and I will. So I will copy all those words. Of course, I can type them manually and I will click to add text and paste or just use the icon on home, which is paste. Now, it looks fine, but it really isn't because it doesn't have bullets. So I'll have to do what I did before. Go right before the first letter of each one of them, backspace, and enter. Hit enough backspaces so it falls back to the um, previous line. And then hit enter to signify that it should be a new line. Because right now there's like soft breaks between them. It doesn't recognize them as real lines. Some people might say all this work I'm doing right now, you might have been better off just typing it manually. Maybe they're right. Okay. Also making sure that it's not bold, even though it looks bold. Okay. But they want me to do what's called a multi-level. Um, bullet. They want accounting and economics to show like they're nested inside business and pharmacology look like it's nested inside pre-med. It's done by indenting, just like in words. So I'm going to highlight these two and find the icon for indentation, which is here. It's under the home tab. And this is going to move it to one level, indent more to the right. And it's going to make it look it makes it smaller and accounting and economics now look like they're nested inside business and i'm going to do the same thing with pharmacology select and indent one save we're getting closer to the end so that was step number 14 out of 18 so we got uh, four steps left Maybe we'll do them in this tutorial. Maybe we'll split it into one more. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, on slide nine, uh, that's step number 15. On slide nine, contact touring uh, services. Remove the hyperlink from the email address. Right now, people ask themselves, what's a hyperlink? A hyperlink is just a fancy word for a link. Right now, there's a link where if people click on it, it should, on a computer, um, launch whatever is their email uh, software. Some people don't even use an email software. They just want that link to be removed. They want the text to remain, but they don't want it to, uh, they don't want it to uh, act like a link. So in this case, I don't even have to select it. Anywhere on it, click. So it's blinking somewhere in the middle of that link. Right click, find the submenu, hyperlink, edit hyperlink. remove link again on windows it might look different there might be actual a command that says remove link but it's going always to going to start let me undo what i just did from right clicking somewhere on the text and finding either hyperlink edit and remove or on windows if my memory serves me well there might be actually a command here called remove hyperlink uh, standalone by itself doesn't matter how you remove it as long as it's removed and it becomes regular text. That's what they want. Save. Pushing forward. So we just finished step number 15 and we got 16 and it's got an ABC. On slide number 10, edit the slide as follows. The slide number 10 is important things to note. Slide number 10, important things to note. And there's a uh, bulleted list here. And what they want us to do with that bulleted list is to format the bulleted list as a numbered list. Let's start with that. How do we turn that to a numbered list? They're right next to each other. First of all, I highlight. Normally, I like to highlight from uh, um, end to beginning. And right next to bulleted list, Right here, there's a numbered list. Click. And it turned into a number list, one, two, three. Then they want me to actually add another number, like a fourth number. Let's mark A is done. Type B on time. Notice that capital B, but everything else is uh, lowercase and there's exclamation mark on the fourth numbered item. 
I hit return or enter, it creates at least a temporary number four, B on time exclamation. Save. And the next step is to type the following text in the notes pane. Schedule your appointment early notice as a period here, so that means that they want me to include that period. Um, instead of typing, I'm going to copy paste. I highlighted this text. I'm unbolding it because they don't want it to be bold in PowerPoint and copy. Or I can use copy here. I'm going, now where's the notes pane? We talked about it at the very beginning. You can show or hide it by clicking this little icon. Notes pane is something that the lecturer or the person giving this presentation will be able to see on their screen, but the, um, the, uh, uh, the audience won't. So click to add notes and paste. Let's see if it added anything I did not want. Yes, a little space. Schedule your appointment early. It's like reminding the person giving the presentation to tell the audience to schedule their appointment early if they want some tutoring. Save. Make sure for the purposes of MindTap that this is typed exactly the way they said in the instructions, because you know it's pre uh, it just looks for exact match. And that was step number C in step 16. We're moving to 17. Move slide 9, so it becomes slide 10, the, sli the last slide in the presentation. Right now, there's two slides left that we haven't done anything with. Um, actually, we have slide number 9 and 10. To change the position of a slide, it's they want me to basically uh, switch between them. It's as easy as dragging and carefully letting go. I'm dragging and see where I'm letting go? Where there's a line under 10, I let go. And now important things to note has become slide number nine and contact to uh, touring services, which used to be nine has become number 10. Just drag them to change their order. Save. What else do they want me to do? So that's slide number, that was step number 17 and 18. Check the spelling of the presentation to identify and correct any spelling errors. So how do we check the spelling? I go back to slide number one, to the very beginning. There's a tab, I be, if I remember correctly, it's under the tab called review. And under review, the very first icon is spelling. I click and it goes through all the text and finds questionable spelling um, errors. For instance, it thinks that part of my last name, Ezra, is a spelling error. It's not. I'm going to tell it to ignore all. It thinks that um, the email might be a spelling error. And it's not, so I'm telling it to ignore all because the email doesn't have, you know, it has words that are not in the dictionary. Ignore all. But it did find one word that is spelled uh, wrong, which is collaboration. And it's suggesting the correct spelling. And I will accept that uh, suggestion and change. And the red line should disappear. Spell check complete. In all, there was one word misspelled. And I believe that completes our step number 18. Then in slide sorter view, your presentation should look like the final figure. This is called, uh, I always forget the name, slide sorter view. It's like those thumbnails. Slide sorter view can be entered by close the spelling by simply going to the bottom and instead of being on this view which is the normal going to slide sorter normal slide sorter there's two ways to do it from here or from the tab called view which also has exactly those same icons normal and here it even shows the name slide sorter 
this is like an overall look of all my slides that let me see all my slides. Um, I can zoom in. Let me actually zoom in so it looks exactly like the instructions. What they want is one, two, three, four to a row, which means the last third row has only two. So I'm going to zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and zoom in until it looks exactly the way they have it. One, two, three, four to a row, three row, last row has only two. Last and final save, and I am um, ready to submit.